four pounds for both. And I am here still in beautiful Chilliwack. Look at this. How can you not enjoy yourself with this? And Hachi keeps trying to go around the corner for something. I think it's like a rotten apple. It's not happening. And there's Obi, my beautiful Ob. His ears have been taped up. He is stunning. So um, they are both dying because of the heat. They're not big fans. I think the weather is perfect. Couldn't be any more perfect. Sorry, I had to skip over his, his long leash. So we had so many errands to do today, including, okay, so this is what we did in the morning time. Of course, I went and I bought my Starbucks. Oh, I didn't tell you guys what happened yesterday. So when I was on my way to my storage to clear it out, and by the way, I cleared out, that storage was big enough to put two cars inside, okay? I cleared out one tenth of it. It's now down to a small closet. I pretty much, I gave four truckloads or the stuff to Valley Village. I donated everything. I'm not going to bother selling. And what for $500? And then I gave some to two family. And uh, I only kept some stuff. And most of it was actually for my dad, for my tatko, who is with me only in spirit, his stuff. So, and I'm only getting another storage room because I'm not ready yet to get rid of his stuff. So, um, sorry guys, it just turned off. Anyhow, so went there, cleared everything out. It went perfect. On Thursday, I'm changing lockers. I'm going to a different storage, um, much smaller ones. So I'm moving my stuff from there. I'm going to pay one third of the price. No, actually one fourth of the price that I was paying at my other storage unit. And I forgot to tell you guys also on Saturday, I happened to sell my Range Rover. All gone, I don't have to pay any more for that. I paid insurance, which was quite expensive on a monthly basis. I was basically paying for three vehicles to be insured because it was the Jeep, the motorhome, and the Range Rover, which I have not driven for like five months. Um, so I'm very happy with that. And it's in really good shape, the car, so the guy who purchased it from me is getting himself a really nice vehicle. And he was such a, he was a wonderful guy. We talked for like two hours, I think, close to two hours. Yeah, just a wonderful guy. I think I made a new friend. Um, I would definitely be calling him up when I'm downtown Vancouver to go for coffee. He's an older guy, okay? He's not a guy like you're thinking of a guy. He's an older guy, like he's very, just very pleasant to talk to he's more like a grandpa anyhow having said that um hope he's not watching this because then he'll say wow am i that old <laughs> um so yes yeah, so on saturday i drove down sold the range rover did all the transfers went to icbc auto plan changed the insurance returned the plates so everything has been canceled and then yesterday i did the uh, u-haul so so far every month I am saving about $400 with downsizing the U-Haul unit and getting rid of the Range Rover insurance, plus whatever might have been wrong with the Range Rover on a monthly basis. Actually, that's more like $500 then because there's always things that had to be fixed. We always wanted, I always wanted everything perfect on that car, even though I was no longer driving it, it's just the way it is. Um, $500, so now I'm seeing where else I can downsize and I'm starting to budget everywhere. Um, budget my food because my food at the moment I'm still spending there and I'm not like I'm not going to be stingy with my food because I am vegan and gluten-free so things are naturally much more expensive and I do I don't really like to eat canned food or things like that so um, I just want to keep healthy and and healthy and energetic so food is important to me so I'm giving myself a a good budget every month for food um, I don't know four or five hundred dollars I guess and then I have some supplements that I take including a high dosage of probiotics 
take about 160 billion. Um, might increase it to 200 just because of my digestive issues. I take fish oil, vitamin D, spirulina. Um, I take a few more things like astragalus for deep immune, um, but I don't take that all the time. I will take it for like a few weeks and then I'll stop and I'll start again. And at the moment I'm on a fluorescence cleanse, which is going great. It's so gentle. And uh, yeah, so, and then protein, of course, vegan protein. Um, okay, yes, I'm vegan, but I do take fish oil just because the other oils don't, are not as sufficient. Um, and I know a lot of people are going to say some negative things, but I'm sorry, they're not as sufficient as the fish oil and what it does for your body. So I'm fully vegan in the other respects, but I have tried fish oil that's not <laughs> from an animal or, or fish source, and it doesn't seem to, to work for me. It just doesn't, you know, and I do flax seeds every day, chia seeds, hemp seeds, and they have a good amount of oils in there. I eat a lot of nut butters. They have a lot of oils in there too, but it's not a full source of all your nutritional needs. So fish oil for me seems to be the it. So, you know, you guys can say whatever you want, but that's, I'm fully vegan. Otherwise I don't eat any dairy, no eggs. I actually find eggs repulsive. I find meat. I will never eat meat. Never. That's completely gone out of my life. Um, two years now, I find it the most disgusting thing, both for ethical and um, taste reasons. I just, I think it tastes absolutely horrific. Um, eggs, pretty much the same thing. I, I find them repulsive, the smell and the texture. Um, yeah, so at the moment that's pretty much it. So yeah, so that's what I did yesterday and today in the morning. Oh yeah, and then what I was getting at is, so yesterday morning when I was on my way to the storage to clear it out, I stopped by Starbucks to get myself my usual cold foam iced cappuccino with coconut milk and easy ice. This was at around seven o'clock in the morning and I go through the drive-thru in Chilliwack. And when I go to pay, and my drinks are not the cheapest, they're normally about $6, right? $6 for a drink, it's, it's silly to say that's what I pay and I don't drink them every day. But when I do it, that is the, the price. Um, so yeah, so when I went to pay, apparently the person in front of me already paid for my, for my drink. And I thought, oh my goodness, you only hear about this. <laughs> you only hear about this in, uh, in movies. Oh, they're both here now. <laughs> in the movies, like, or on the Ellen Show or something. And I said to myself, oh my goodness, I've got to pay it forward too. The funniest thing is that that same morning before I left the house yesterday, I actually wrote something on Facebook to do something generous for someone today and they don't have to know that you did it. You don't have to tell them. So I couldn't believe I posted that and then this is what happened. So today when I went to Starbucks, I actually paid for the person's drink behind me. And uh, yeah, so you've got to pay it. It's, it's just got to do the same. Got to keep the, 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 the wonderful line of um, generosity, generosity going, I guess. Um, just be kind, like Alan says, to, to, to everyone, I guess. You know, if, kindness is always a good way to go, especially if people are angry. If you're kind, they eventually mellow out. Um, so I did that, and then I had an appointment for something. And then after that, I went to a health food store and I had everything that they have in the down store, downtown stores here. And I bought myself my probiotics, my vegan protein powder. Um, I bought some uh, uh, salad dressing, some cacao powder. E I bought some chewable ginger, um, some deep immune by I think Botanica, the company, and uh, oh, frankincense and rosemary. I bought all that. And um, from there forward, I went to Trades Masters, Jellowak. I wanted them to show me exactly how to tow the, the Jeep tomorrow. 
there's like a whole bunch of steps that you have to do, including um, disconnecting your battery. So when we opened up the hood, I looked at this battery and I had so many wires going to it. And I thought to myself, there's no way I'm going to disconnect the batteries every single time I have to tow my, my Jeep. So they said, well, we can actually put a battery disconnector for you. It's a couple of hundred dollars. The installation takes about two hours. And I said, yes, please. I would rather spend my time doing other things when I have to close shop before I have to pull than be disconnecting the battery. And when I say disconnecting, I don't mean that you just take out a wire and put it back once you're at your location. I mean like you take a wrench, you unscrew some screws, take off the screws, disconnect the wires, and then you pull the vehicle. And the worst part is like once you're pulling, okay, and say something happens, you know, like just anything, and you need to drive your car right away. You have to connect right away again. And the connection is not going to take that short of a time. I know it's just a screw and stuff, but still you have to get in there. It'll take me a good 15, 20 minutes every single time. And what if I'm staying somewhere for only one night? Then you're telling me I have to do this job for that one night? Like, no. So I said, you know what, put the disconnector switch on. And that's what they're doing this Friday. They're putting it on. And uh, yeah, so it's just a matter of a switch on off. I also stopped by this place called Raining Cats and Dogs and all my fur balls are going to have um, themselves washed on Friday. And the price here for their spa treatments is like literally half. So it's really well priced. So they're all going to the spa on Friday and the girl there was recommended by the breeder for Obi and she's going to send me some phone numbers for places to go where Obi can be trained in agility and stuff like that. So anyhow guys, I'm going to get going because I have things to do and I want to, you know, kind of start closing up a little bit today if possible and yeah closing shop that's what I call it closing shop today because tomorrow morning I have to move uh, to Sunnyside anyhow guys thanks for watching a uh, day in my life and uh, um, enjoy the rest of your time with whatever you're spending it doing <laughs> hope it's something that your heart throttles for <laughs> but um, oh, it's a beautiful eagle flying I don't know if you guys can see it there. Is that, am I looking at it? I don't know if I have it. It's there somewhere. Anyhow, guys, thank you so much once again and uh, talk to you later. Bye. I just wanted to show you something now. This is at the end of the RV park that I'm staying at. And this area here is actually a no sewer area, meaning you, and it's only 15 amps, so I wouldn't do anything for my <laughs> motorhome, but my bus. Um, I need 50, 30 will run it somewhat efficiently, but uh, to some extent that you can't run too many things. Anyways, no sewer means that there's water and electricity to go in, but you cannot dump. You would have to physically go somewhere and dump your waist. Um, I just want to let you know what's in the back. These are my favorite spots by the way. And of course I brought my Prince Ove. Um, we just finished our 20 minute training session. So anyhow, this would have been my favorite spot and I'll show you why. So look at this behind me. Like, can it get any better than this? The river flowing through. If you can get there is the forest. Now, I'm not an expert in water, so I don't know if that's considered fast walk through. I definitely know that my kids cannot do it, and Obi 
the one I'm pulling. Um, you guys how wonderful this is and it has a little path. And you can go walking. And then here's an RV park. Nature. Sorry. You have to learn to a little training right now to walk right beside me. Nature. RV park. Nature. Probably don't see anybody. Lots of people. Yeah, it's just this path to the, the division. And he's unlearning everything that he has learned. So yeah, I just wanted to share this with you guys. And the sound is just off. Oh, it's so soothing. wonderful sparkles. I am so sorry, first of all, that I have not vlogged. Secondly, Hachi is being a bit of a pain in the butt. Thirdly, I made a fire all by myself. I cannot believe this, guys. So what I did is my next door neighbor, he's gone right now, as he previously knew. He taught me that you're supposed to bunch the paper up into like small pieces I'll just throw it in like that and then you're supposed to cut with the wood into smaller pieces with an axe which I don't know if I'm ready to do that just yet and then you make yourself a little fire so that's what we have here now and it smells wonderful don't really have anything to put on it, but I'm not used to making fires. That's for sure. There's a lot of little things flying everywhere. The crackling noises. And Hachi. Hachi. They are I speak to them in Bulgarian. Said me. Obi? Obi. Ah, to tika. Ne. Ni ni amo da pravimo to va. Ne. So I don't know which one is the one that starts it. Normally, but I think I'm pretty sure it's OB. It's much too hyper. The little one is way more relaxed. OB is more neurotic. If you don't know who OB is, he's the bigger one. The older one is way more neurotic. The, the younger one is very neutral, very calm, very different persona. But, uh, yeah, this is burning wonderfully. And there's even a little. Somebody gave me that. Well, didn't give me this, but let me use it. Um, and you're supposed to use this to cut. The, it's a stump, a tree stump. You're supposed to use it to cut the the wood on, right? You put a piece of wood, and then you put your with the axe. You break it down into smaller little pieces. But I'm not ready for the axe. Just put it that way. There are certain things that will just take time. One of them being using an axe unless it's absolutely necessary. Look how beautiful it is. And the other one is... Well, there's more than a few, but... <laughs> Sorry, it's just... all going in my face. Not used to it. I love fires. Why it's always going in my face? No matter which direction I sit. Um, and the other is, I really want to go hiking in the forest by myself. I don't know if I'm ready for that either. And I think everybody would say the same thing. <laughs> but I do. I have two shepherds. And the only reason why I think I'm a bit apprehensive right now is, first of all, they're both babies. Well, Obi's 
is eight months, but um, Hachi's only four and a half, five. He's young, <laughs> uh, although he's feisty, he's still young. Secondly, I'm afraid of being lost and losing cell phone signal and things like that. So I do want to get a few things for when I am hiking solo, like um, Garmin has a few products. Well, I'm assuming many companies do, but <laughs> sorry guys. Where you can let your family member know your location, even if your cell phone has no reception. And some of them get pick up satellites and you can even check emails and all sorts of stuff. So it just depends how much you want to spend. Of course, knowing me, I do not want the most basic. I would want a little bit more. And uh, yeah, and I do have a compass. So if I go walking in the forest, I really, I should put together like a kit that I bring with, with me at all times. Like extra food, just in case get lost and it takes me a few more hours but I do need that um, and we're talking about like not your regular hiking you know, I'm talking about really going in there of course I'm not going to do any of that if there's a lot of people in the in the forest um, don't need my whole supply list but if I'm the only one there yes I don't, once again, I don't know if I'll be ready for that anytime soon. Like, I don't know, have you guys seen the movie Wild? I think that's what it's called with Reese Witherspoon. She tracked for like three months by herself, right? So, I don't want to track for three months, obviously, by foot, but um, I do when I go places, I do want to go hiking by myself with my fur dogs. So, yeah, that's where it stands at the moment. The outdoors. It's so beautiful. I can't believe how how calm and how peaceful it is. And I don't know. I just I just feel like I all this time I've been really doing the opposite of what us human beings are supposed to do. I have been cooped up inside. I, I go outside, but not like really in tune with nature. I shop. <laughs> I used to go club hopping a lot, so there wasn't much um, camping or anything like that. My family loved and still loves uh, picnicking and being outdoorsy, but um, in terms of really getting in there and hiking and being one with the forest or one with the beach or one with the river or one with the lake, <laughs> whatever. Um, no, it just wasn't part of my growing up. Um, although I do have to say in Bulgaria, my parents brought me to my to our summer home every summer. We were there for two months, me and my sister. And we were pretty much allowed to do whatever we wanted. It was in a small little village. And at that time there was no crime. We're in that place, there was no crime of any sort. So me and my sister would run freely all day long and Many times I was actually on my own. I would go through forests and find rivers and, you know, look for rocks or odd little creatures in there. I would climb, climb cherry trees and pick them. And sometimes I would find a worm, sometimes I wouldn't. That's how organic things were. I'd go pick up bread uh, from a bakery. That's all they did was make freshly made bread every morning and you could smell it down the block um, and uh, yeah so my family owned everything from the ground all the way up to the mountain top pretty much each of my mother's sisters owned a piece of that land don't know what happened to it but yes yeah, so that's the way it is and uh, we did that, but other than that, we were, if you consider camping, staying in a hotel with my family and going to restaurants, then okay, but <laughs> I think of camping more like just really being in nature and raw and wearing shoes like these and whatnot, so didn't do much of that, but I 
can now. I'm by myself. But I do have to say, guys, I love it. I'm sorry. I'm not used to the smoke of the fire. <laughs> That's ridiculous. I know. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I, I really love it. I don't know. We'll have to see how it goes with um, pulling my Jeep with my motorhome. I've driven the motorhome by myself. Well, not by myself. HR was sitting beside me, but I drove it um, majority of the time when we picked it up. So, yeah, that's the only thing. And with my big beast, I don't think I can go off-roading too much. I'll have to stay on the freeway and look for places. I can't exactly, I'm not exactly stealth. If you know what I mean. I'm a little bit too big for that. But, um, we'll see how it goes with pulling. Can't be that bad. I want to get my trucking license anyways. So, Okay, maybe you're not supposed to be this close to the fire. Oh. Maybe. My fire is fine. I think I'm on the wrong side anyways. Um, yeah guys. Like, you know, once in a while it's nice to have company, but at the moment I'm really, really enjoying my my solo doing stuff on my own. Oh, sorry, it's it's smoke in my eyes. Um, but I really want to go to Arizona. It's not happening in the summertime because a few people told me that it gets much too hot and my German Shepherd would not appreciate it. Um, so I'll have to wait until like October. Uh, so in the meantime, in July and August, I guess I'm going to start with Washington and just kind of work my way down slowly. Or I could perhaps... No, that wouldn't work because I do want to use my Thousand Trails. Um, my Thousand Trails Pass. My gosh, this really went in my eye. The smoke. Ugh. Ridiculous. I guess I'm standing in the wrong place or maybe I'm standing too close. Guys, let me know below what did I do wrong. <laughs> Anyhow, um, yeah, so that's what I'm planning on doing. So if it's too hot, I do want to do California West Coast along the water though. Somebody suggested Montana and South and North Dakota. I don't know if I'm too keen on those states to be one of my first, but... Well, you just have to play by ear. See, that's the thing about this lifestyle is that um, you just never know where you end up, and I love it. The unknown. So, and I made my life in such a way that I just have to um, basically work to have enough for my monthly bills. I have no expenses besides my monthly bills, like my cell phone bills, and I have a few. <laughs> um, and my furballs, medical insurance, pet insurance I have. I have my storage fee, which I'm going to um, get a new one, half the size of that one, because I think what I'm paying for my storage right now is ludicrous. And what else? Oh, um, insurance for my motorhome, insurance for my Jeep, and gas, and food, of course, for me and my fur balls. So, that's all I have to work for on a monthly basis. And of course, if I need other things or repairs and whatnot, although I do have full warranty on my motorhome and I have full warranty on my Jeep. But anyhow, I still need money but I don't have I don't have a rent I don't have a mortgage I don't have any car payments I don't have any credit card payments I best basically have no debt of any sort and that's the way I made my life I just would like to make enough for my monthly bills and just travel explore uh, make a difference with every stop and that's about it 
So guys, here I am having my green tea, drinking by the cocoa. Okay, I have to show you guys. This is one of the prettiest. Um, it's it's a coffee filter type of a. I don't know. You would you you would put your coffee inside, and it's from Starbucks. You would filter it through there. I haven't yet used it for coffee, but I have for tea. Um, it's really pretty. It's a cute kettle. Not an electric kettle. But um, yeah, and I have my flamingo cup. It's, it's a flamingo, I promise you. Okay, see it. Yep. Uh, I have my hand clean because my hands are so dry. It's a Swiss product. And that's about it. Well, guys, I promise, I promise, I promise to make many more videos because it seems like every day is a new content. Oh, the newest one. Okay, let me show you guys. Oh, you don't even know what I went through today. I should have filmed that. So the newest one is... The generator door does not close. Something's going on here. It's like spooky. So I close it and then it opens up by itself again. So I did call a technician and he said maybe it's your hydraulic pump. And he mentioned it's some electrical problem too, but I'm not quite sure. So yeah, that has to be fixed. And there's always stuff that needs to be done. But for the most part, that's it. What lies beneath this fence? I would love to be able to explore on my own. Just have the jeepers creepers of watching too many scary movies. <laughs> Lovely sparkles. Okay, so I have to mention something and this is since I'm such a genius. No, just kidding. I figured something out. So um I have these 50 foot leashes, at least one of them is a 50 foot by Leash Boss, a company called Leash Boss. Um, and on this one, on the 50 foot, I even extended it further. I think that's another 20 feet, so it makes it like 7 feet. And I have a couple of these leashes. So yesterday I tied up the leashes to the Jeep. And uh, what I noticed is that um, since they want to both of my shepherds want to run and to catch balls. It didn't work out so well just because they're always caught up in in the in the leash when it became taut. Um, when they're extended out too far became obviously stiff and uh, Hachi uh, was a little bit injured. Um, so having said that I figured out another way to do it. Just don't tie them up and if I need to pull them back, I just grab one of the leashes and that's that. And I still have control. I have complete peace of mind. It's a beautiful field. And uh, yeah, so I'm really happy with that. As you can see now here. Oh my gosh, sorry. <laughs> the, the, the camera came up as me tossing the ball. Okay, that's ridiculous, but that's okay. Anyhow, so that's what I wanted to mention is uh, finally figured it out and I'm really happy about that and that's only if you have like open fields like these obviously. Um, Molly! See now they're going a bit too far so all I have to do is just chase them with the camera. Yes, you get to see it live in action. See and I just pull it back if I'm not digging something and that's that. But how easy was that? I love it. Easy peasy. Just pull it. So anyhow, look at this view, guys. Oh, Obi's ears are up. And then they're down, then they're up. They're up for an hour, they're down for an hour. Hachis have been up since the first day that he came to his home. 
And Molly is extremely feisty. Uh huh. Okay, let's see if I can do this without shaking the camera. <laughs> Why is it so hard? <laughs> Good slide, Ob. <laughs> So as you guys can see, the way that these two play, they play quite nicely, but okay. So Obi is the really fit physicality. He's so fit. He's got so much agility. He's just, what are you guys eating? No, 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 Obi, no. Hachi, no, they're eating bird stuff. As I was saying, he's really agile. He's very fit. He loves to run, loves to chase balls and things like that. Hachi, on the other hand, is completely different. He's not interested in anything as such, but what he does do that's different than that Obi does not is he actually attacks. He attacks like, like a pit bull. <laughs> he just, here, I'll sh show you an example. If I can grab the ball. Oh, oh, the ball's over there. So I'll show you, Obi will want to go and chase the ball and Hachi will want to just chase him to take him down. Just watch. There, he just tries to take him down. That's it. And he succeeds a lot of times just because he's more aggressive of the two. The little one is way more aggressive. So yeah guys, I have the best of both worlds. One of them does not like to run, but he is extremely... Well, uh, Obi's actually really strong too. I can't really say that, but there he was... <laughs> there you go, as you see it firsthand. Straight for the neck or the tail. They're both really strong, just the little one has more, I think, aggression, persona-wise bit more aggression so he's first to go and the little one's only going to just take him down just watch you watch it just like pray there <laughs> there you go that's 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 what he does <laughs> he's not interested in the ball he just wants to attack okay guys I have something very interesting to report so we're back out here again in the huge field playing ball with Obi and Hachi, well mostly Obi. Um, when I normally uh, allow Molly to just uh, run around because she never goes anywhere, she just stays put. She's really good about that. And she was sitting in the middle of the field just relaxing, sitting down looking so beautiful. And all of a sudden I see these two eagles. There is one right there, if you guys can see it. Yeah, right there. And then its friend is, and they were both together up until a second ago. Well, I guess this one's trying to catch something. Um, its friend is maybe elsewhere looking for food oh anyhow the whole point is that they started circling right above molly <laughs> she's small she's only about eight pounds and she looks really tiny in the big field so um as soon as i noticed that and that was really quickly i just moved her from the field and tied her up to the vehicle um, yeah, despite the fact that there are two big dogs running around, um, the eagles had no mercy. They must be really hungry or something because they were actually circling around her. Anyhow, I wonder where the other one went. I only see one now, unless maybe he picked up his prey. But you can see how, how stunning it is in the evening time. The clouds have moved away and you can see almost every inch of the mountain. And tomorrow I have a really, really busy day. So 
I have to go, I have to leave here at around 7 because, or maybe even 6.30. I have to be in Vancouver by 9. I have a tennis lesson between 9 and 11. And then at 12.15 I have an appointment, a personal appointment. And then thereafter I would like to go to um, my fur balls is, um, bed and just weigh Obi and Hachi, see whether Obi's getting some weight, not if he's eating kibbles. Um, I still have the raw food in the freezer, I just need him to gain weight. He has been the same weight uh, for like a month and a half to two months, it's ridiculous. So yeah, that's where we stand. And then after that, I was actually going to go and do another errand. Just looking at that. It's a crow picking up something. Another errand in Burnaby. And then start heading back. So tomorrow I have a pretty busy day. Look, all these ears are almost up. Of course, he doesn't like something, so. He's on a leash. You can just pull him. He's very much into guarding lately. He's become quite protective. So, yeah, guys, that's it. That's all I have to report. And I must admit to everyone that I don't even know what it is about the Jeep. I love it. I absolutely love it. I. I don't know, I'm obsessed with driving. It's such a fun ride and I have never taken off the soft, the soft top. That's what it's called yet. I need to get some big Velcros apparently to Velcro it down when you take it like halfway, which is what I'm going to do initially. But yeah, well, that's it. Love it. And a moment in my life. Thanks for watching guys. I so very much appreciate it. There's my other garden. Geriatric. <laughs> Muffle. <laughs> You're very scary. You are so scary. And of course, they're tangled up. Come on, Muffle. Come on, baby. Oh, there you go. I don't want to get pulled by old me. Once again, a day in my life. <laughs>